Okay, so a stanza for A hundred agonies in black and white from which his editor will pick out five or six for Sunday supplement. The reader's eyeballs prick with tears between bath and pre-lunch beers. From aeroplane, he stares impassively at where he earns his living and they do not care. Okay, so we've got here a hundred agonies in black and white. So you've got the numerical adjective hundred. Okay, it's used to emphasise the number of the victims, the people that have been impacted in this war zone. Um, and they are literally the picture of agony, of pain, of horror. Um, so straight away they should evoke sympathy in the reader. Um, ironically though, out of all those pictures, the number of people, victims that he has seen suffer, um, only five or six will actually make it to the sun Sunday supplement, so to the newspaper. So his editor um, will look at all of these pictures and pick out five or six. And you think the ones that he'll pick out will be the ones that are the most graphic, the most shocking, the most disturbing, most upsetting, um, where in one sense that that is what you need. You, these pictures are intended to shock people um, and to shock its, to shock its readers, um, to understand the true brutality and horror of what is happening around the world. But then there's also like the the hunt of a journalist where they're wanting the most striking image. OK, remember back to a passage to Africa where it talks about wanting the most striking picture because that also is what is going to sell more papers. Um, so it almost makes it sound, I don't know, quite selfish in a sense. Um, the fact that it's in Sunday's supplement, OK, so it's Sunday's newspaper, but a supplement is normally um, like something additional. So sometimes if you buy a magazine, there might be a free supplement with it. Um, or a newspaper, there might be a, like a thin brochure inside. So it's even as if like you've got these people who are dying around the world and still they're not making front page news. Um, it's still just a side story as if it's not that important. Um, OK, so when people read it, their eyeballs prick. OK, so when I've taught this before, um, students say that the word, the verb prick is quite, um, is quite harsh, um, which maybe makes it sound painful. Um, but what I think is if someone was to say prick your arm, um, it might be painful for a second, but it's just a prick. It's gone straight away. So uh, that what that makes me think is actually this, these tears are very very temporary, um, and as quick as they're there, they they're gone, um, and I'm sure lots of people are guilty of this when you read a story in the news or you see an advert on TV or if you're scrolling on Facebook and you see something sad, yes we might momentarily feel guilty, sympathetic, we might even go as far as crying then we might turn the TV on and we'll forget about it. And it's harsh, but sometimes it's a reality. Um, would we feel differently, though, if we were the ones who were actually there seeing it and we were photographing it? Um, OK, so in this line, um, with tears between bath and pre-lunch beers. OK, so quite domestic language used here um, with drinking beers, pre-lunch, bath. Um, so it's, again, juxtaposing the, the comfortability of the readers at home um, in contrast to those in the war zone. Um, so in here we've got an internal rhyme of tears and beers. Okay, so the rhyming, not at the end of the line, but it's the word is internal. Um, what I think this could show is that those tears in that same line, the fact that then that's immediately followed by beers, shows how quick that they're going to get over that. Um, and it is a very, very fleeting sensation. Um, from the aeroplane, he stares impassively. So this adverb, impassively, um, reflects the photographer's frustration with the reader's apathy. So the reader's apathy could be um, their, lack of, their lack of feeling um, towards the others that are suffering, um, almost their, their indifference. Um, which is maybe because they can't 
they can't fully empathise with them because they haven't been in that situation themselves. Um, he feels no emotion for these as their focus. He feels no emotion for these as his focus is on those who are living in the reality of a war zone. Um, so when he's leaving the war zone, when I guess by this he's flying home, he's looking down upon the place he earns his living. He makes money by taking pictures of those who are suffering, and probably the worst pictures, the worse the pictures are that he gets, um, the more he might profit from it. So maybe he's having a inner conflict with that as well. Um, and then he says, and they do not care. Okay, this, the, they here is ambiguous. Who is he referring to? Is he talking about the actual victims in the war zone don't care? Um, or more likely, um, is it the readers don't care? So it ends very, very bleakly, as if all of this that he does is pointless. Okay, although the solutions could lie in those photographs, um, he knows ultimately that people don't care. Um, so yes, it has quite a depressing ending.